What's going on guys, Pi here. Um, in this video, I'm just going over what's gonna be in my pack for my upcoming High Sierra trip. I'm linking together a series of trails through the High Sierra over the course of about four to five weeks. Um, this is what's gonna be in my pack. In an attempt to keep this video kind of brief, I'm not going into a huge amount of detail on each item. Um, I have either reviewed this gear previously on the channel or at least gone into detail um, on most of it at some point. If you do have any questions for me, then drop them in the comments below. So starting off with a pack that I'm using this year, it is the Gossamer Gear Gorilla, which is a 40 litre backpack. Um, it offers plenty of capacity in there and when I do need to carry a bear canister, I can just strap it to the top underneath that flap there. Um, I try not to use too many stuff sacks, so I use a trash compactor bag. I've been using them for years and I really trust them to uh, waterproof all my gear and it also just really helps compress everything down inside the backpack. Um, in the top left hand corner, we've got my trekking poles. They are, um, I don't know what the model name is, but they're from Black Diamond. Um, they're pretty heavy, but I've had them for a good while. I know they're very solid, um, and I actually trust metal trekking poles a lot more than I trust uh, carbon fiber ones, because I have seen those snap on people before, um, and I'm pretty reliant on those because I set up my tent uh, actually my tarp using those. And then below that is the leash from my ice axe. My ice axe is NLA waiting for me when we arrive. Um, obviously do need to carry an ice axe this time of year because there is still probably going to be a good amount of ice and snow out on the trail and the leash there is just used to secure it to my wrist. Um, when I'm hiking across uh, snowy and icy trails, if I was to drop it, um, then hopefully that le leash will help me kind of like recover it and then self arrest in an emergency. Obviously, hopefully don't have to use that. Um, next to that, working in conjunction with the ice axe is a pair of Catula micro spikes. They um, offer really good traction on sort of icy, snowy trails. Um, obviously all of this gear adds a good bit of extra weight that I wouldn't normally be carrying on most hikes, but it is pretty mandatory for this trip. Um, Below that, we've got my cooking and water setup. Um, I'm actually undecided whether I want to go stoveless on this trip. Um, this trip is going to be really heavy just because of some of the extra gear we are carrying. So I may go stoveless, I'm not sure, but the stove um, I have reviewed previously is the MSR um, Pocket Rocket Deluxe, and that's an MSR 800 milliliter Titan kettle. Um, got the mandatory titanium long-handled spoon, platypus two-litre water bag, and then just a soya, a regular soya squeeze filter um, with a smart water bottle. And I will replace that other water bottle on the right-hand side there with a small uh, Gatorade bottle for coffee and kind of electrolyte drinks. Next to that, in the small Ziploc bag there, that's kind of my um, first aid slash repair slash emergency kit. So there's a patch kit for my Thermarest. There is some Luco tape to deal with blisters, some ibuprofen, some Imodium. There is a mini bit lighter in there just in case of emergencies if the a uh, piezo igniter was to fail on my stove or I needed to create a fire, then I have a lighter with me. Small pocket knife, that's just an Opinel folding knife. I love their knives, super lightweight and high quality. Next to that is a um, bug net. That is a Sea to Summit, I believe, a micro bug net inside a Hyperlite Mountain Gear little stuff sack. We're probably gonna be dealing with a good amount of mosquitoes and bugs on this trip, so want to be bringing that along. Of course, I need to bring my passport with me. I am one of those foreign guys, so passport is coming along and that is gonna be inside a Z-Pax um, Cuban fiber kind of little storage sack thing just to protect it and keep it, keep it from getting wet and bashed up. Then we've got my harmonica. I do play the harmonica, not very well, um, but I do enjoy bringing it along with me on trips just so I can play in the evenings and just you know relax a little bit after a long day of hiking. Next to that is my poop kit. That is the Deuce of Spades. It's an excellent little trowel. It barely adds any weight into your pack and it works really, really great. Um, obviously with just some toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Then on to my shelter system, my sleeping stuff. My sleeping bag for this trip is the Thermarest Hyperion. Um, I do have a separate video on my shelter system and then another one on my sleeping gear. 
but the Thermarest Hyperion is super lightweight. I think it comes in at around 20 ounces. It's good down to 20 Fahrenheit, minus six. Obviously that is just the storage sack um, that I've got it in there, just so it stays nice and puffed up. But when I head out on the trail, it will go inside that um, trash compactor bag and it packs down extremely, extremely small. Um, keeps me warm, does the job, super happy with it so far. In conjunction with that is the Thermarest X-Therm. I decided to go with the X-Therm on this trip because we are gonna be dealing with some pretty seriously uh, cold temperatures, probably well below zero um, on some of the nights up in the mountains. So instead of bringing the Thermarest X-Lite, which is the sleeping pad that I'd probably normally used, I decided to go for the X-Therm because it does obviously really boost up the insulating value of my sleep system. It's a little bit heavier, but only by about an ounce, ounce and a half, and it is a lot, lot warmer. So bringing that one along, also bring in a um, silk sleeping bag liner. That one's made by Rab, it's just really simple. Uh, rectangular design. It's a little bit of extra weight, like five or six ounces, but it does increase the warmth of my sleep system. And it also uh, just prevents it from getting as dirty as it would otherwise with the sweat and the grime coming off my body. Then we've got my shelter system itself. Inside the Hyperlite Mountain Gear stuff sack is um, my tarp, which is the Gossamer Gear twin tarp. It's a huge, huge tarp, which gives a lot of coverage. Um, so if it is raining, I can huddle up underneath there and stay dry. Um, and then in conjunction with that, I'm using the bivy sack from Enlightened Equipment. I think it's called the Recon. Um, I have a separate video on my shelter system um, that I released some months ago. You should definitely want to check that out. You know, ideally I will be cowboy camping most of the time, so that will hopefully stay in my pack. Um, but when I do need it for bug protection or rain, then I have those two working really well in conjunction with each other. And then below that is an assortment of stakes. I think there's 10 in there. Um, the majority are MSR um, mini groundhog stakes. I like those. Um, they hold really well, and so they're obviously great to use in conjunction with a tarp if it is very windy and then I have maybe four or five uh, titanium shepherd hooks for the less critical uh, stakeout points. Then this section right here is kind of toiletries, miscellaneous and electronics and the top left hand corner there is a four USB wall charger. It's a pretty heavy thing but it allows me to charge multiple devices simultaneously um, if we are just stopping in town briefly and I need to charge up batteries for my camera, my phone, my external battery. Um, it is really nice to be able to do that. Next to it is an Anker external battery pack. I think it's about 10,000 milliamp, which usually is more than enough for me. Um, Spot Messenger, that is actually new to me this year. I've never used one previously on any of my hikes, but after some of the stuff we were doing on the CDT, I decided to pick one up. I found it um, secondhand on eBay, and I'm really glad that I have it. It only gives me a little bit more peace of mind um, out on the trail. Then is a Coast rechargeable headlamp. I also have a separate review of that. Um, I've been very, very happy with it. I like to have a rechargeable headlamp. It's extremely, extremely bright. I think about 500 lumens. And then the beam adjusts, you dial the nozzle there and it basically gives you either a spotlight or a wide flood beam. So very happy with that. And then just some earplugs. I'm a pretty light sleeper, so I like to have earplugs with me just to block out any sort of noises and if we're sleeping in hostels and motels and stuff. Then we've got charging cables. It's one lightning cable to charge my iPhone and then two micro USB cords, um, a pair of headphones. And then here is some toiletries and kind of self-care stuff. Pretty self-explanatory. We've got toothbrush, toothpaste, um, some Vaseline, which is what I use to apply to my feet every morning before I start hiking to prevent uh, chafing. Then we have some bug spray. That is kind of a large container of bug spray. I will be picking up something a little bit smaller. Um, and then most of this stuff um, during the day inside my backpack lives in this Hyperlite mounting gear pod. These things are really sweet. I actually really enjoy them. Um, they kind of work like a tray. So when you're actually out on the trail, and you get to camp, you can just kind of zipper that open and everything's there where you need it. You don't have to like dig around inside like a regular stuff sack. And then on to all the stuff that I don't recommend people carry, but I am carrying myself. So this is pretty much all camera um, and video gear. I am shooting a special video project um, this year out on the trail. So 
Although this isn't essential for most people, and I have really tried to whittle it down as much as possible, this is adding a good amount of weight into my pack. But it's for me, it's worth it. So in the top left-hand corner is a uh, fanny pack from uh, Gossamer Gear. Um, it doesn't weigh much at all. Um, obviously, it's not essential, but for me, it's really nice to use it because I can put small essential stuff in there um, when I'm in town or if I am hiking away from camp a little bit. I can put extra batteries in there and anything I want to have with me. Um, and obviously a lot of this electronic gear can go inside that during the day, just so it's a little bit more organized inside my pack. At the top there is two filters for my camera. Um, one is a ND filter and one is a circular polarizer. They just allow me to do some things with my camera um, that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. They add about four or five ounces. Um, so it adds a good amount, but for me, it's totally worth it. Um, they're in just side of a small sort of padded case to help protect them. Then we've got my furry windshield, which I use with my H1N Zoom um, audio recorder, which is recording this video right now. The camera that I'm recording this video on is the Sony a7R II. I did a video on all my camera gear a few weeks back, so I definitely encourage you to check that out if you want to know more about my setup. Um, then we have a dual battery charger for the camera and three extra batteries plus the one inside the camera. So we are talking about a pretty good amount of extra weight here. I think camera gear for this trip is about four pounds. So it adds a good amount of weight to my backpack. Um, we've got some SD cards there. We've got a lens pen to keep the camera clean out on the trail. We've got some extra batteries there for my audio recorder. That right there is a mount so I can attach my external audio recorder to the top of my camera. Then we have a mini tripod. I'm undecided whether to carry this mini tripod or actually step it up and carry a full size tripod um, on this trip. Um, because of the project that I'm shooting, I really do need to have a tripod with me to get a lot of the shots that I'm trying to capture. Um, and I probably am gonna end up carrying a full size tripod. Um, obviously a lot of this gear is subject to change and when I'm back from the trip I'll of course do like a separate video to see what worked, what didn't and what I ditched. That little red guy there is a attachment system called the Keyhole. Um, it allows me to carry my camera on my chest using the shoulder straps. Um, you screw that little guy into the bottom of the camera and then it is basically just like a little solid uh, camera harness. And then these two things right here. At the bottom is just a little roll of gaff tape just so I can use lavalier mics out on the trail. And then the Ursa Foamies uh, work with my lavalier mic that I'm recording on right now just to reduce on wind noise and allow me to hide a lavalier mic when I'm interviewing people. I will also be carrying an Ursac on this trip for bear protection. There's a few sections where a bear canister is necessary by law, so of course we will be using them um, on those sections. I also didn't touch on my clothing because last week I released a full video breaking down all the clothing that I'm using on the trip, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, but you guys are probably thinking like, wow, that's lots of heavy, heavy gear, and it's true. Um, I think my base weight for this trip is right around 19 pounds. Um, but the camera gear, of course, is not mandatory, but I want it. And for me, it makes me happy to carry um, that camera gear with me. So I've decided to do it. Plus, then there's the extra weight of ice axes and micro spikes and all that stuff. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm leaving links to in the description of basically everything that I've mentioned um, in this video. Um, I will not be releasing some videos now for probably a good couple of months while I'm out on the trail. Um, but if you do want to follow my trip, then you can follow me on Instagram. It's just at pie on the trail. Thanks for checking out this video, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.